What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ground Station Pro app offered by DJI. This came out just a few months ago, and I haven't really gotten the chance to learn all the features until quite recently, as I never gave it all that much attention. This app is currently iPad only, which really does suck, and I do hope it comes out for other devices soon, as I know a lot of people use iPhones and Android devices. Now this app's main purpose is to plan flights, or as DJI calls them, missions before takeoff. This app isn't perfect, but in today's video I figured I would go over all of the settings and fully explain what they mean. Many of the controls and settings are hard to understand, so I do hope that this video helps you guys out. Now in order to make this easier for you to follow along, I will include a red arrow to indicate where I am referring to on the screen. Now without wasting any more time, let's jump into it. To start things off, let's take a look at all the different settings, buttons, and icons on the home screen. Now starting in the top left corner, we have the home button. And right now, it's not doing anything. It pretty much has no function when we're on the actual home screen. But once we get deeper into making missions and creating different types of missions, this will act as a home button, allowing us to get back to this home screen right here. Now next to that, we have a quadcopter icon that clearly states which drone we're using. I feel as though this is somewhat redundant, as of course you know which drone you're using, but just in case you guys have forgotten, they've included that in the top for you to take a look at. Next to that we've got our mode, and this is basically the mode that our drone is flying in. So right now I'm in GPS mode or the standard P mode. If we flip it over to sport mode, we'll notice that this text changes to sport. And if we flip to ATTI mode, of course it'll switch to ATTI. Usually I'll keep mine in GPS mode, as the drone will be flying itself and I want to make sure that all of the sensors around the drone are enabled. Next we've got the satellite icon, and this does two things. First of all, it'll show us the amount of satellites that are locating our drone to establish a GPS connection. And it also shows those 1 to 5 bars, it's pretty much a signal strength, and they're color coded. So if you have red, it's going to be poor signal strength. If you have yellow, it's right there in between. And if it's white, you're all good. Everything should run perfectly. Now next to that, we also have the remote controller icon. This will show us the, string, the signal strength between the remote as well as the drone. Again, this is color coordinated. Red means poor signal strength. Yellow is right there in the middle. And white means you're all good. Next, we have the camera. And it'll show us the signal strength from the camera as well as which camera we're using. Again, just like the quadcopter icon, I feel as though this is quite redundant. I feel like the only time that this comes in handy is when you're using an Inspire drone. As the Inspire drones do have separate cameras that you can attach. Next we have two battery indicators. The first one is going to show us the aircraft battery and the next one will show us the battery life of our mobile device, in this case our iPad. Now there's two final things that we do need to go over on this top bar of the Ground Station Pro app. The first are these three dots, these are kind of some miscellaneous settings. We'll be able to calibrate the compass, choose our stick mode, turn on map optimization if you're living in the mainland of China, and choose our measurement unit between imperial and metric. Finally, we have this help tab, and this kind of some even more miscellaneous settings, showing us the app version, the terms of use, the user manual, as well as the license. The final icon along the top bar is this flight icon. When we click that, it'll pretty much start the mission. But it's not going to start it right away. You are going to have to click another start button. Before we have to do that, it's going to go through all the different sensors, calibration, etc, etc. But this is something that we'll get into later in the video when we go over some of the different missions. There is one final thing that I did forget to mention, and that is the line that's going across the bottom of the top bar. This is also another battery indicator, and when we're actually flying in the air, it'll show us the amount of time estimated remaining that our battery has until it dies. Now moving down from the top bar, we do get into some more juicy information. On the left, we have some of our different missions. We can see all of our missions, our virtual fence missions, our waypoint missions, and our 3D map missions. And from here, we're able to load up these missions that we've already saved. Now moving over to the map, we'll notice that we have three icons we need to pay attention to. First of all, it'll show us our current location, and I can tell you right now I'm not standing underneath of that tree. For some reason it shows a fake location, or it shows some place that you aren't, and I feel like this is a glitch at the moment. I hope this is something that DJI fixes, as this is super annoying when I'm trying to plan my mission. Next we have this green circle marked with an H in the middle. This signifies our home point. And then finally just underneath of that, we have this white circle with the blue triangle in the middle. This shows where the drone is currently located. And just next to that, it'll also show the distance of the drone from the home point. Moving along, we have three more buttons in the top right corner that we need to go over. I'm not really sure what these official names are. For this video, I'm going to refer to them as button 1, button 2, and button 3. So hopefully that's easy enough for you guys to follow. Now button 1 is going to snap to our current location, so once we click this, we'll notice that it pretty much centers us on the screen. If we move all the way over here and click it again, it'll snap right back to our current location. 
Button 2 is going to show us different map styles. So right now I'm on a satellite view. I can then switch to a hybrid view, which is maps or street names as well as satellites. And then I can switch over just to a pretty much street view. Usually I use the satellite view so I can actually see what I'm mapping. And I don't have to deal with all those street names pretty much clogging up my screen. Now as far as Button 3 goes, right now it's grayed out. And for some reason I haven't been able to get it to work throughout my entire time of using this app. So if you guys know what this does, make sure to leave it in the comments below, and once I find out, I'll throw it down in the description for you guys. For the longest time, I thought that I was going to be able to snap the whole entire map to look north. As you guys know, if I rotate it this way, and I click this, it should be able to snap it up like that. I hope you guys understand what I mean, but as of right now, it's grayed out, and I have no idea what it's used for. And finally, to wrap up the buttons on the home screen, in the bottom right corner, we have the new mission button. From here, we can choose a new virtual fence, a new 3D map, or a new waypoint route mission. So guys, as I said, this pretty much does wrap up this home screen. Now let's move on to creating some different missions. For the second half of this video, I am going to do it a little bit differently. Usually I'll get the footage first and then do the voiceover afterwards, but I'm going to do this live, so I'm talking to you guys right now as I'm controlling the iPad, which should make it easier for you to follow along as I create these different missions. Now I do want to mention that I've since disconnected my iPad from my Phantom 4 Pro and the cool thing about this app is you don't need to be tied down to the remote to actually create different flight plans. So whether you're out in public, whether you're laying in bed, or you just can't connect to your drone at that moment, you're still able to create all these missions that I'm showing you guys right now. Jumping down into the new missions tab, we'll see that we have three separate mission types. Virtual Fence, 3D Map, and Waypoint Route. Now let's first take a look at Virtual Fence, and this works pretty easily, it pretty much works just how the title says, it's going to create a virtual fence that our drone cannot fly out of. So we can do this by either tapping on the screen or controlling the aircraft and flying to the destination. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do tap, and let's say we want to create a virtual fence around this green. So we'll tap in the middle, which will bring up a box. Now we can move these different waypoints around, and if we want to create a different waypoint, we can click the plus button in the middle. From here we can set some different settings on the right side and look at the different values around the screen. So let's go and take a quick walkthrough. First of all in the top right we can set the mission name by clicking the pencil button. For right now I'm going to keep it as mission 9. Next we're going to see our mission type which is obviously virtual fence. And after that we'll be able to set our maximum speed as well as the maximum altitude that our drone can fly at. Underneath of that, we'll be able to see the latitude and longitude of the virtual fence, and we'll also be able to delete a point if we don't like where we've set that waypoint at. Next, we have these joystick-looking thing. Uh, there's the different arrows, and basically this is used to fine-tune where that point is. So sometimes you can't get that exact place that you want the point to be set, so if we move that waypoint down just a little bit, it'll move it ever so slightly, which is perfect if you're kind of trying to map out a really tight area. Next up we have this little black box and this will be used if our drone is connected so we'll be able to see what the camera sees if we're trying to fly around and set this with our aircraft rather than tapping on the screen. But for right now our drone is disconnected so we're just going to see nothing. Next to that we also see some different information about the drone. We'll see first of all the heading of the drone and then the speed, the latitude and longitude and also the altitude. As I said currently my drone is not connected so there's going to be nothing for those values but once you start up your drone, you'll be able to see where it's located, the altitude, the speed, etc, etc. And finally, once we're done creating this virtual fence mission in the top left corner, we can simply click save, and boom, you're saved. Now we can click the back button in the top left corner, and we'll notice that the virtual fence is still sitting there on the screen. Using the aircraft to actually set the virtual fence is pretty similar to actually tapping on the screen. The only difference is that you actually need to fly the drone around. So as you fly around, you'll be able to see these three buttons along the side. We have finish, set, and it's kind of like a back arrow button. Basically, if you accidentally set a point, you're able to delete that. So as I walk around or as I fly around, you notice that as I click set, these different waypoints set and then once I'm all finished, I click finish and the virtual fence has been set. From there, I'm able to tweak all the different settings like changing the speed as well as the altitude. The next mission type that we have is 3D map. This allows the drone to fly through an area that you've selected to map out what's on the ground, such as buildings, agriculture, fields, etc, etc. So once we click on 3D map, we can actually lay this map out by tapping or the aircraft. So first of all, let's take a look at the tapping method. Now let's say we want to map out this hole just like we laid out with the virtual fence. First of all, we're going to tap in the middle of the screen to bring up the box. 
now we can move these waypoints around just like we did in the virtual fence mission type and then we can also hit the plus button in the middle to add new waypoints so we can make it nice and defined and really get the area that we want so this area right here looks pretty nice this was a good little example to show you guys how to lay out the waypoints but from here it really doesn't work all that well when I show you how to actually 3D map this area. So for that let's move on to another example that I created just a few days ago. Here I've laid out some confines around the 14th hole on the golf course that I live on. As we can see the blue lines signify the area and the green lines signify the path that the drone will fly on to take pictures. In order to hide those green lines we can tap this button in the top right corner. Usually I would recommend turning this on and keeping it on as you always want to know where your drone is flying and the expected route that it's going to be flying along. Underneath of that we can hit the pencil icon just like with the virtual fence to change the name of the mission. For now I'm going to leave it as golf course 14th hole 3D map. Underneath of that we have some information that we can look at. First of all we see the mission type which is 3D map dash area. Next we have our flight time estimation which comes in at around 5 minutes and 59 seconds. After that we have our flight length which is 3,537 feet. And then finally we have our waypoints quantity which comes in at 78. Now the waypoints quantity kind of goes hand in hand with how many photos it takes. Usually the camera on the drone will take photos at every single waypoint. So you're going to come out with around 78 points or 78 photos give or take one or two. Underneath of all that information we have two separate tabs, basic and advanced. First let's go over some of the different options under basic. The first option that we have is camera model. With this I've selected Phantom 4 Pro but you do have a wide range of different camera models to choose from. Obviously you want to choose which drone you're using, for me I had the Phantom 4 Pro just because that's the one that I use when mapping using Ground Station Pro. And you always want to make sure you have your camera selected as switching up drones will switch up the estimated flight time for some reason. So right now I've got the Phantom 4 Pro camera, if I switch to the Phantom 3 Professional camera it bumps it down. Again I have no idea why, but you always want to make sure that you have your drone selected to get an accurate representation of how long the flight will take. Underneath of that we have our shooting angle, which is parallel to main path and vertical to main path. Now one thing that I've noticed is that when you shoot with vertical to main path, it's definitely going to add a lot more lines or a longer path that the drone will have to follow along, but the lines always tend to be straight, whereas sometimes when you select parallel, the lines will be sideways, just like this one right here. Although parallel to main path may save you some time, I usually tend to shoot on vertical to main path just to make sure that my photos come out looking nice and crisp and they all line up together when I'm stitching them together. Next up we have our capture mode. We can choose between hover and capture at point, capture at equal distance interval, and capture at equal time interval. Now the two last options, the two interval options kind of go hand in hand. With hover and capture at point, the drone will stop at each individual waypoint, take a picture, and then continue to move on to the next one. With capture at equal distance interval, where the drone is going to continue to fly along its path and not stop, but it does fly at a slower speed. So if we choose our hover and capture at point, we'll notice that we can change the speed up and down, but if we choose something to like equal distance interval, we're not able to choose the speed whatsoever. Usually I would recommend choosing hover and capture at point as I feel like that's the way you get the best looking images. Next up we've got our flight course mode. We can choose between inside or scan mode. Now the way that inside mode works is basically like a virtual fence almost. The drone will never leave the confines of the area that you've selected. If we select scan mode we'll notice that sometimes the drone will cut corners such as right here in the middle of the screen. It'll go outside of the area to make sure that it gets to the next point or the next line that it needs to travel along as fast as it can. Usually I would always recommend staying on inside mode as you want to make sure the drone is always inside of your area you've selected as you know that that area is going to be safe. Underneath of the flight course mode we can change our speed as well as our altitude that the drone will fly at when it's moving inside of the area. As you can see the altitude does change the flight course path. The reason that it changes that is because obviously the drone will be higher and it's going to take larger pictures so it doesn't need to make as many sweeps. Now that we're done going over some of the options under the basic tab, let's move over to the more advanced settings, which features some different sliders that really allow us to take control of how the flight will go. So first of all, we have our front overlap ratio and our side overlap ratio. This is going to choose how much the pictures will overlap, and usually when using a service like Drone Deploy to stitch together your images, they recommend that you use a 70% overlap. So usually I would always recommend keeping these overlaps over 70%. 
When we change the overlap ratio for front, we'll notice that the waypoints go up and down. And when we change the side overlap ratio, we notice that the whole entire flight path actually changes. The next option that we have to change is course angle, and this will actually choose which way the drone flies. So I always like to choose something that looks natural, like if we see this right here, there's a bunch of lines going everywhere, and for some reason that just doesn't look natural for me, the drone is going to be flying everywhere, and I feel like it's almost going to struggle to take pictures. So usually I'll set the course angle to something that looks the most natural, and something that will make the drone, you know, give it a nice easy path to fly along, which is this right here. It looks like the drone is going to make some sweeps going back and forth, which is going to be nice and easy. Next up we have margin, which will dramatically change the flight route. So as we can see, when we move it towards the left, the margins around the outside of the area actually get bigger. And something like using negative 86 feet is going to be ridiculous. The drone isn't even actually going to pick up anything along the top. Usually I'll keep the margin all the way at 0 feet, just so that the outsides of the area overlap. And when I'm trying to make a nice 2D map, I'll make sure that I'm getting the whole entire area that I've selected in the frame. Underneath of margin, we have gimbal pitch angle. I would always recommend keeping this at a negative 90 degree angle as that's going to have the camera look straight down and when you're making a 2D map that's the best way to have the camera. You're not going to have it at 0 degrees looking straight forward as you're going to be taking pictures of trees and sky. The final thing that we get to choose under the advanced tab is the end mission action. We can choose between return to home, hover, and land. Now to choose the return to home altitude we can simply click on it again and choose our return to home altitude. As for the rest of the things across the screen, it's pretty much the same as the virtual fence. In the top left corner we have the save icon, in the bottom left corner we have some information about the drone, such as the heading, the speed, the latitude and longitude positioning, and the altitude. We also get in the bottom right corner those joystick looking buttons that allow us to really fine tune our waypoints. So if you select this waypoint up at top, we'll notice that we can actually move where it goes using these little arrows, and it really does come in handy when you're trying to get a nice precise position. Using the aircraft to set up the 3D area is fairly easy. All you need to do is fly from place to place and click the set button to place a different waypoint or a different marker. You can hit the back button underneath of that to delete a point that you've just placed. And once you're all done, you can click the finish button in the top right corner. From there, you get access to all the different settings that you get when you're actually tapping on the screen to set the area. The third and final mission type that we have is Waypoint Flight. This allows you to set a course for the drone to fly along that includes multiple waypoints with different actions. We can set these by either tapping on the screen or setting them with the aircraft just like in the DJI GO app. First, let's take a look at the tapping method. Setting a course is super easy, all you need to do is tap on the screen to set the different points. Here we'll notice that the starting point is marked by a circle with an S in the middle. If we want to add another point in between any of the points already declared, we can click the plus button and drag. First of all, we'll be able to change the name by simply clicking the pencil icon. Then we can see the mission type, which is our waypoint flight. Next we have the flight time estimation, which comes in at around 1 minute and 25 seconds. Underneath of that we have our flight length, which comes in at 845 feet. And then finally it comes in with the total quantity of waypoints, which is around 7. Underneath of that bit of information, we can change the settings for all of the points or for each point individually. So first, let's go over some of the different options for all points. First of all, we get to choose the speed at which the drone will fly. Moving this back and forth will thus change the flight time estimation. Underneath of that, we can set the altitude for the entire trip. After choosing our altitude, we can choose the aircraft heading. This basically chooses which direction the drone will face when it goes to each waypoint. So first of all, we can choose course aligned, so it pretty much will face straight as it moves to each waypoint. It'll follow that green line and look straight ahead towards the next waypoint. We can also choose defined per point, which allows us to go under the each point settings and choose which way we want the drone to face at each of the different waypoints. Finally, we can choose manual, which allows us to choose the heading of the course manually from our remote using the sticks. Next, we get to choose the pitch angle of the gimbal. If we have defined per point selected, we can then change the pitch angle of the gimbal at each point under the each point tab in the top right corner. If we have it selected to manual, we get to select this by ourselves as we're flying using the left wheel on the remote controller. Finally, we get to choose our end mission action. We can choose hover, land, or return to home. If we click return to home, from here we get to choose the altitude at which the drone will return to home at. Now that we're done taking a look at the general settings for all of the points, let's move on to the tab that says each point, which allows us to customize what the drone does at each individual point. First we have altitude. If this is set to disabled, the drone will stay at 210 feet throughout the entirety of its course. If we click enabled, we're now allowed to choose the altitude 
per point. So right now, I've got 400 feet at this point, but if we move on to the next point, the altitude is still set at 210, and that goes for saying for each of the different points. Underneath of the altitude, we also have our aircraft heading, and right now we're not able to change that, but that's because we need to go back to all points and change the aircraft heading over to defined per point. Now once we go to each point, we'll notice that we can change the aircraft heading depending on which waypoint we go to. Also, when we take a look at the actual map, we'll notice that there is a little line or a little arrow next to each of the waypoints that has now appeared. The actual way that the aircraft will be pointing is signified by that little arrow above the circle. So as we notice when we move back and forth, we can see that the drone is moving from side to side and we can really choose which way we want the drone to be facing. Underneath of that, we can choose which way we want the aircraft to rotate, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And we'll notice that this is signified by that little arrow next to the dot or next to the waypoint. Finally, we get to choose our gimbal pitch angle, and because in our all points section we have choose define burr point, we can choose any value between 0 degrees and negative 90 degrees. As we know, 0 degrees is looking straight forward, and negative 90 degrees is looking straight downward. The final thing that we get to choose is a waypoint action. Once we click add waypoint action, we'll notice that there is a list that includes hover, photo capture, start recording, stop recording, aircraft rotation, and gimbal pitch rotation. So let's say at this point we want it to hover and we want it to photo capture. We can reorder these by moving them up and, them up and down, or we can propagate actions, so therefore it will move these actions to all other waypoints. One thing that I must mention is that these waypoints don't act like the ones in the DJI GO app. As you know, in the DJI GO app, it'll continuously go to each waypoint and keep moving, but each time that it gets to a waypoint in this application, it comes to a halt and a stop, which is kind of weird. I feel like I would wish that it would rather go on a fluid motion through each of the waypoints and not stop at each waypoint. I'm not sure if DJI intended it to do this, but again, I do know that this was made for mapping and not really for cinematic purposes. As far as the rest of the icons go on the screen, they are pretty much exactly the same from all of the other mission types. In the top left corner, we can save our mission. In the bottom left corner, we have some different things like the aircraft heading, the speed, the latitude and longitudinal points, and the altitude. Finally, in the bottom right corner, we have the same thing. Again, we have that little joystick -ling thing, the arrows, that allow us to really fine tune where the points go. The one new thing that we have is this icon right next to the delete button, and it says an S and an E, and basically this swaps between start and end points. So right now, my start icon is towards the bottom of the screen, and I'm finishing where the blue waypoint is in the top left corner. If we click this button, the rolls will reverse, so we start all the way up in the top left and end all the way in the bottom. If we choose to select our waypoints using the actual aircraft rather than tapping, it works almost exactly like it does in the DJI GO app. We just have to click set when we get to the point that we want to actually drop a waypoint. If we want to delete the previous waypoint that we just set, click the back button that is located underneath of the set button, and once we're done, click on the finish button. From there you'll get access to all of the settings that you did when you would tap on the screen. The last thing that I wanted to go over with you guys is this screen that pops up once we go to take off. Basically, it's kind of like a prepare for flight checklist. It shows us which drone we're using as well as which mode we're flying in. It shows us the distance from our flight area, the GPS, the compass and IMU, the battery, the camera, SD card, and mission action as well as the waypoint. Once you see all green, you should be good to go. Hit start to fly and make sure that there's nothing above you so the drone can take off smoothly and not run into a tree. That would probably be something that you don't want to happen. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also, make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions whatsoever. I know this certainly was a long video, and I'm sure that DJI will make some changes to Ground Station Pro in the future, and if they do add a new mission type or just any new settings, I'll be sure to cover them in the next video or another video down the road. So guys, as I said, this video is coming to an end, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.